Hey everybody, welcome to a very special K-Fest edition of Ron's Computer Videos. Hey, let's talk about my very favorite add-on for the Macintosh, and it just so happens to be the Apple IIe card. These things were so great back in the day. It allowed a school or a business that already had a big investment in uh, Apple II software to carry that over with the new hotness that was the LC Macintosh. <sighs> I don't know what we were thinking back then. So let's take a few minutes and maybe let's consider some neat modern add-ons and upgrade options for the Apple IIe card. Uh, there's surprisingly more out there than what you might think. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me and uh, thank you to the KFest crew for uh, allowing me to do this video. Now, just to make sure that we're clear from the outset, uh, this is not a how-to video for the Apple IIe card. This is more of a discussion of neat add-ons and stuff that you can get in 2021 to either replace original hard-to-find parts or to uh, sort of uh, enhance your experience with the card. There is a cool video that is coming up after this one that Jay Graham is putting on. And that video is going to go more in depth on how to set up the card and maybe some of the uh, neat uh, configuration options and kind of get into the weeds on uh, kind of best configuring the thing. So I'll leave that up to Jay. I just wanted to talk about some neat things that I've picked up to uh, kind of make this experience better. So everybody is familiar with the Apple IIe card, and what this is, uh, careful dealer installation required, is a cost-reduced version of the Apple IIe on a card. Surely everyone has ran across at least one of these over the years. Um, the cards are easy to find, uh, easy in that occasionally they do pop up in a machine that you've bought at a school auction or from a former uh, educator or maybe uh, just something in an estate sale. Uh, the problem is finding that elusive um, Y cable. And what this does is this has the high density connection on one end that plugs into the Apple IIe card and then it has uh, two connectors on the other end, one to attach to a um, floppy drive and then the other for a joystick. Honestly, you can do a lot of things without this cable, but if your plan is to maybe play games, a joystick really does kind of make things better, especially if you're going to play around with something like a uh, total replay. So what do we do if we're missing this elusive Y cable? Well, we purchase an aftermarket replacement is what we do. Uh, this cable right here, I purchased from a company called IEC. Um, I purchased this before I actually came across a, a real cable. Um, these things are not super expensive, but you do have to call them and kind of ask them uh, how many they have in stock or if they'd spend one up for you. Uh, this cable right here with shipping, $33.75. If you call them and request part number L1573, they may have some made up or they might make you one. Another neat aftermarket cable replacement are these, um, are these sort of PCB breakout boards uh, that were made by McDougie out there on uh, 68K MLA. I don't think Dougie's making these anymore because he spun up a whole big batch of these in 2016. But Jay has told me that uh, there may be some replacement ones coming soon. Uh, I guess stay tuned for an announcement on that. But this is a really neat little card that what it does is it takes that high density connection from the Apple IIe board and breaks it out to your DB connection for your Apple floppy drive and the other, the DB9 connection for the uh, keyboard, or I'm sorry, pfft, the joystick. But uh, of course there is some voltage and stuff going through here. So uh, this is kind of a prototype version, but uh, supposedly the new ones will kind of address some of the safety issues with these. But uh, I think I paid $30 or something, and uh, that was probably a, a pretty good bet uh, when you kind of consider the cost of original cables or even the, uh, the larger aftermarket ones. And like I mentioned, Having that joystick adapter is so important if you want to play games, because without it, I, maybe you could wire something up, but uh, you know, it's really, uh, Total Replay is not as much fun without one. So uh, of course you can always use your classic joysticks like this um, 
like, you know, this classic right here. Uh, or um, Javier has been remanufacturing these uh, PC joysticks to be compatible with the Apple II. Uh, so like this craft right here, which uh, I like it. It's a pretty nice little controller. It's a little beefier. Uh, so you got big hands, it's not too bad. Uh, but don't forget, there are also modern replacement options for that stuff as well. Like the simple joystick, from Apple2.net. Uh, I ordered one of these, this is kind of cool. It allows you to uh, sort of have like more of a gamepad kind of experience. Um, these you can really, really dial them in uh, in terms of compatibility and they stick there unlike kind of those uh, 30 year old potentiometers. Um, something else you can maybe check out is uh, Bluetooth options like the A2IO that allow you to use a uh, like a Bluetooth gamepad or a Bluetooth joystick, or even your uh, iPad or I think Android tablets as well, that will allow you to basically emulate like a koala pad or uh, paddles or all sorts of neat things. Um, I thought that this was really, really great when I purchased it because uh, I really, I couldn't find a set of paddles to save my life. And uh, this allowed me to kind of live that experience. Um, the Koala Pad support is a lot of fun too if you want to do drawing apps on the Apple II. Um, I don't think these are very expensive. I think you can, if you Google A2IO, you can get more information about it. Ah, uh, but where would we be without physical media or physical media emulators? Ah, who knows? Uh, but the 2E card allows you to use uh, not only like real physical drives, which we all probably have like a mother load of these laying around, uh, but you can also use cool drive emulators like the Floppy Emu, which everybody and their uncle is familiar with, uh, supports like um, Apple II mode and, um, or I'm sorry, it supports like five and a quarter inch disc mode, three and a half inch disc mode, supports um, smart disc mode. So that way that you can boot uh, things like uh, Total Replay or any of those other cool um, sort of uh, d uh, game and app compilation things you can download online. And don't forget about the W drive. It's maybe a cheaper option. Um, the W drive, I think the new version, this is the older one. Uh, the newer ones have OLED screens, sort of like the floppy emu. And uh, they are working on a version of the firmware for this device that will allow you to boot smart port volumes with the Apple II card or the Apple IIe card. Um, as it sits right now, it uh, will try to load the uh, soft SP, uh, which will immediately crash the Apple IIe card. Uh, so it's kind of a work in progress. They are uh, taking a look at things. Um, these solutions use a um, IDC connection for the, uh, the uh, for the interface for the floppy. But of course you can just use the same uh, adapters that you would use with a uh, Macintosh to uh, go ahead and uh, connect these up to your Apple IIe card. Fully compatible, uh, shouldn't have any issues. Just remember, you do have some uh, exposed voltages and stuff back here. So as you plug things in, just make sure you don't have anything shorted out, get all your polarities correct, and you're good to go. What Mac should you use for your Apple IIe card? I would say, any Mac that's compatible with the card. So if you want to have an old school real experience, maybe an LC or an LC2 would be the way to go. Uh, especially since the uh, the card itself does not support 32-bit uh, mode, so uh, you are kind of limited on RAM anyway. But um, so a machine like an LC or an LC2, which honestly don't make a whole lot of great use. <laughs> the 32-bit mode might be the way to go. But I'm very lucky I have an LC3 that was donated to me, uh, or donated to the channel by um, Sean at Geek with Social Skills. So again, I thank him all the time for this, but thank you very much. And then I have my trusty Color Classic that I also have a card in, uh, so that way that you can take your Apple IIe experience on the road. So speaking of your Macintosh, uh, what type of storage options should you use on the Mac side? Honestly, at this point in the game, uh, these mechanical hard drives are really on their way out. I, I, I understand. I, I love hearing that sound of the mechanical hard drive. It really adds a lot to the experience. But if I could make one small suggestion. A modern drive emulator like the uh, Blue SCSI, which I'm holding right here, gives you a lot of freedom in terms of being able to uh, back things up, configure things very quickly, recover from uh, strange configuration tests, as they call them at my house. 
Um, the the device itself is really nice. Just use a micro SD card uh, that's formatted either FATX or FAT32. Pop that on your PC or your Macintosh. And basically you can just copy drive image files to it. So you uh, go online, you can download some pre-built images, uh, use that to install your uh, favorite version of Mac OS, which would be uh, 7.5.5 or lower because uh, anything above that absolutely turns 32-bit mode on. 32-bit mode is not compatible with the Apple IIe card. So save yourself a lot of trouble in configuration and don't do that. <laughs> but the uh, the blue SCSI will allow you to go ahead and use the built-in drive files or built or sorry pre-made drive files off the internet, um, and then you can go through, reformat them, reconfigure them, add real uh, Protoss partitions to the drive, or you can use something like a Creator Changer to take a uh, like a PO file that you might download online, something like a uh, like a smart uh, smart drive partition or something like, or drive image, and convert that into something that you could then open with um, the Macintosh and then mount that through the control panel. There's lots of different options, but if you are looking to build real Protoss partitions, you can't go wrong with a blue SCSI. That's really it, folks. Uh, this is only like a 15 minute session, so I wanted to leave a little bit of time at the end to maybe uh, answer some questions or have a little bit of a discussion about uh, some neat maybe add-ons that you've seen for the Apple IIe card. Or maybe if you have questions about where I source some of these items or how to make best use of them, I'd love to talk to you. So hey, let's open up some discussion. And remember, Apple II forever.